Tennessee Senator Marsha Blackburn, Republican member of the Judiciary Committee. Senator, good morning to you. Good morning. So what do you see as next with all of this impeachment stuff? What, what, where where well, does it go ultimately? Yeah, you know, Sandra, I think what we have to do is kind of go back and look at what we do know. We do know that the whistleblower had contact with Adam Schiff and his staff, that he is a partisan Democrat, that he is uh, has worked for one of the presidential candidates. We do know he got some things wrong in the whistleblower uh, report, whether he wrote it or Adam Schiff's staff wrote it. Basically, this guy is the front man for the whistleblower band. And they have created this narrative and they're going to stick with it. What we will see going forward is they're going to try to get people to come in. We will see if they produce a report in the House and we'll see but if Senator, they send is it, it to smart us in for the, the Senate. Is it smart for the White House to, to block these witnesses? You know, some Democrats say, well, if the call was perfect, uh, just let them go forward and give their story. Would you object Sandra, to that? Sandra, I will tell you this. If I were one of the witnesses, I would not agree to come forward until I had the same rights and protections that are afforded to every American citizen. Mm -hmm. Michael McCall was with us at the end of last week, and he, was, he wasn't messing around. He says Adam Schiff is complicit with the whistleblower. Is there evidence, do you believe, that will come forward that can support such a charge? Well, we do know that Adam Schiff lied that about contact with the whistleblower. So as we move forward, and I, I agree with Representative Doug Collins that you should bring the whistle for, whistleblower before the Judiciary Committee and uh, Adam Schiff before the Judiciary Committee and ask Adam Schiff, did you talk to him? Uh, put him under oath. Find out because we're finding out Adam Schiff had contact. He lied about that, so bring him forward. Let him. Let us find out what that contact was and what the participation okay. of and his we, staff we'll see was. Okay, apparently these here, the interviews today that were scheduled will not happen. A lot of no-shows up on the That's Hill. Right. We'll see whether or not and how far that goes. And at some point, you're going to see public hearings, maybe next week, but again, that could be delayed. On the job performance, here's what our Fox News polling shows. 42% approve, 57% disapprove of the president's performance. How do you stack that number up? When you're looking at a campaign that is arguably already underway, is this administration, does it have problems? What I do know is the New York Times poll this morning in the battleground states I found to be very interesting. And one of the things I always uh, look at with polls is who are they polling? And are they polling registered voters and likely voters? What we do know is that Americans are very satisfied with the job numbers, the economic growth. And we also know that Americans are not buying the socialist agenda that is coming from the Democrats. I mean, my goodness, Elizabeth Warren's $50 trillion Medicare for All plan, 170 million Americans would lose their employer-provided health insurance. People do not want this socialist agenda. They like the economic growth that is coming from the Trump administration. They like the fact that there's regulatory relief coming from this administration. So I think they're in pretty good shape. It's really interesting uh, when you look into this polling, Senator, uh, when asked the question, which Democrats uh, running for president can beat President Trump according to those Democratic uh, primary voters? Joe Biden tops the list at 68 percent, Elizabeth Warren second at 57 percent. So should President Trump and his team fear Joe Biden as the front runner the most? President Trump is going to be on solid footing. I fully expect President Trump and Vice President Pence to be reelected because Americans are doing well. Tennesseans talk all the time about how they have benefited from the Trump economy. And they know that during the Obama years, they couldn't get a raise, they couldn't get a job, their kids couldn't get jobs coming out of college. They are very satisfied with where it is and they are very fearful of what a Democrat administration headed by Elizabeth Warren would bring their way. Mm -hmm. Senator, just one more question too, and just sure. going back to what Ken Starr had to say last hour. He said, we, um, what, what the Republicans in the Senate should do is approach it the following way. We have questions about the phone call, but none of this rises to an impeachable crime. Have you had okay. conversations with your Republican colleagues about that particular defense going public? 
There's been a little bit of a conversation back and forth among members, as you would expect there to be. I will tell you this, what I have seen so far, what I've heard so far, what I've read so far, there is nothing that arises to an impeachable offense. And what we have to remember also is that Bill Clinton was impeached for lying under oath. And he had committed an offense, and then he lied about it under oath. And the Senate still did not convict him. Yeah, I understood on that. W within your conversations, could you characterize what your Republican colleagues are talking about, just the, the, the way you answered that question? Uh, when I talk with individuals about this, whether they're House members or Senate members, people realize there is nothing impeachable that is in that. And also, we realize, Bill, that the Democrats from day one have said they were going to impeach Donald Trump. That has been a goal. Now, they are so focused on they lost the election. They are filled with hate toward Donald Trump. It is their goal. They see it as their job number one to impeach him. And the American people just don't see I, it I that way. I guess what I'm driving at here, and I yeah. just have a couple seconds, and a very important question here. Have you reached a consensus that the call was improper? Could you characterize it that way, yes or no? I wouldn't characterize it as improper. I think what we look at the call, and there is nothing there that is an impeachable offense. Okay, Senator, thank you so much. We hope you thank come back. Thank you. Thanks, Senator. Marsha Blackburn there in Tennessee. Thank you.